This is the Average Joe Strongman Show. What's up, everybody? Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Lee, my brother from another mother, Mike, and this is the Average Joe Strongman Show. So we got another great episode tonight. We've got an interesting guest with us tonight. We got Frank Rabinovich, who is the owner, operator, CEO, president, and head dude of Impact Mouth Guards. So we're going to hit this subject really hard today um, and see what Frank's got for us as far as feeding us information on how you know, mouth guards not only help the strength athlete, but, you know, what's the benefits and what's the, uh, you know, the inhibitors of, you know, what happens if you're not using a mouth guard? What can it do for you? So uh, we're going to bring Frank on. So stand by. There he is, Frank. Hey, hey. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Absolutely, Frank. Oh, uh, good. How you doing? So, Frank, for anybody that's watching or listening and doesn't know who you are and isn't familiar with obviously your brand impact mouth guards, uh, tell us how you got started. I mean, what what inspired you to start the company? You know, I, I am a beer league hockey player, always have been. <laughs> I've spent a lifetime in the beer leagues and uh Never wore a mouth guard until about 11 years ago when a buddy of mine suggested that I go to the dentist and get one. I was pretty skeptical because, uh, first of all, I didn't even like mouth guards. And he, he said, well, this is going to change your life. And so I went to the dentist. The dentist did the impression and uh, made me a mouth guard. And when I got up to the counter, uh, he said, it's 200 bucks. And I said, 200 bucks? Are you crazy? <laughs> right? You know, I nearly uh, took, took one on the floor. And uh, I paid the 200 bucks, but when I popped this mouth guard in, it really did change my perspective on what a mouth guard could be, how it should feel, what it was like to wear something that fit perfectly. And, uh, you know, I correlated that experience with the experience my kids were going through who hated mouth guards. Every kid hates mouth guards because uh, if you guys play football or any other sport, you boil, you bite them, you put them in your mouth, and they yeah. fit like shit. So, uh the idea was Not born. Like, it always sucked just putting that hot piece of plastic in your mouth. That, was it, that was it. There. There's a huge fear factor for kids and for adults. For sure. You know, you're looking at that thing yeah. and you, you're saying, you want me to do what with that? And, <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're supposed to fish it out of the hot water and put it in your mouth while it's molten hot. And yeah, Put uh, this in boiling water for your, your 60 seconds and then, you know, suck on it for 30. Like, <laughs> That's right. what? Sometimes. It just never works. It never works very well. And so sure. uh, the idea was born to provide custom made mouth guards at an athlete friendly price. Very and uh, I'm very happy to say that uh, next week, September 1st, is our 10 year anniversary. So uh, outstanding. Yeah. Congratulations. That's fantastic, That's fantastic man. Well, going now, quick, quick caveat this episode is going to air after that. But regardless, congratulations on uh, your Absolutely. anniversary. Absolutely. That's awesome. Years. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so beer league hockey, I think you would fit in very well with beer league strongman because we've never yes. done that at a comp. Um, <laughs> but but you know, so how did I mean? I'm assuming you know, being a hockey player, you know, impact really got a foothold with hockey and football and you know combat sports, right? How how did you end up getting into strongman? So it's true. We started our uh, business. Uh, making mouth guards for friends and family in the hockey and lacrosse communities. And that's really where we started. But quickly what happened was, and I'll draw a correlation to the strongman community in a moment, but what happened was we uh, met a fighter who said, well, you got to come to this fight. And it happened to be in Tennessee, uh, Johnson City, Tennessee. And uh, it was the first time we ever went to a fight. This is probably a year after we started the business. And uh, all of a sudden we got this tiny little foothold in MMA. And that foothold grew and grew and grew to where it overtook uh, our hockey and lacrosse business. And uh, now wow. if you look if you look at our company, the uh, battle sports of MMA, boxing, jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai, uh, kickboxing, 
those are all much bigger for us than uh, hockey or lacrosse are. That's your well, biggest they, segment, really? Yeah, those are our biggest segments. And so, wow. you know, our 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 uh, historic sports like hockey and lacrosse remain good to us, but the fighting sports are much bigger. Huh. Well, you well, know, well, football. Yeah. Football, you know, is pretty way down the list because really? uh, the mentality we run into with football oftentimes is still, uh, you know, we'll get the quarterback or the smart player as a mouth guard. Everybody else, uh, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> the linemen don't need no special mouth guard. Yeah, that's yeah, what right. we, we hear over and over again, you know. <laughs> and so those lip protectors that you see now that are real popular, right? they're not doing anything. They're, yeah. they're not – the only thing they're protecting the guy from – is a finger coming through and gouging the lip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, I never understood those either. Just so, Lee, yeah. you weren't out there, right, because you were a quarterback, right, pretty boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was. Right, yeah, so for sure. Yeah. <laughs> got, got me so, hooks. That's right. Yeah. So, Frank, going back to Strongman real quick, um, yeah. sounds like it's something that's, you know, not brand new but relatively new. So, so what – what is it you like most about the sport of strongman that that uh, is attracting to uh, your business? Well, for me, you know, uh, personally, we came to strongman about 18 months ago, and okay. uh, we've been going to events. The first event we did was uh, a year plus ago, the Alabama Strongest event, which uh -huh. we just we just recently did again. So uh, we've come full circle a year. But in that year's period of time, I think we've been to. Uh, I'm guessing, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 strongman events. Awesome. And uh, what I find personally is it's so much, and you made a joke about it earlier, but it's so much like the beer hockey community to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In that, uh, you know, everybody's competitive with each other, but everybody's kind of on the same side. Sure, you know, yeah. and you might do battle on the ice or uh, uh, lift in the log, but after that, Everybody's buddies. It's all good, yeah. you know. Uh, and, and so I found that really compelling for me personally. And Jack, our brand manager, who's also a hockey player, uh, you know, he, he thinks the same thing. It's just that's awesome. It's good people, and yeah. that's that's really what's attractive. Well, that, we we get that a lot. I think when you talk to people, like, what do you like most about the sport? And almost to a person, everybody says, you know, it's it's the people, the community, the brotherhood, the camaraderie. Um, particularly with the Masters folk, we've joked about how. Some of the young guys will see all of us, you know, with our foot, you know, or hand in the cooler, or icing something down, and we're sitting there drinking a beer, you know, three events in, and nope. they come over, and they're all like jacked up on their pre workout, and they're trying to like you know, get their nose twerking, like get get their rage. And I was like, why are you guys so chill? It's like, dude, we're just happy to be moving. Yep, <laughs> we're just glad to be here. Just happy to be moving, right? I'm just glad exactly. to be here. So, so I'll tell you, like, uh, just a quick story, but uh, uh, Jack, who happens to also be my son, but he's the Impact Brand wow. Manager. Uh, he left his college hockey career because he graduated in the middle of COVID, but he, he, uh -huh. he came to work with, with me, but he also came to the beer league to play hockey with me. But <laughs> the, the downside of that is the team started uh, skewing younger. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so uh, me and a couple of the other old guys, we had to leave and go down a few levels yeah. so that uh, we could keep up. But, uh, yeah, I know exactly how you, what you think about oh. the younger guys. Well, back to Alabama Strongest, how did that connection happen? Like, what, what got them interested or what got you interested in that? We were introduced to uh, Chris Slater, who runs okay. that event, uh, by Dion, who runs uh, yeah. Strongman Corporation. Yep. And so she put us together with uh, Chris, uh, and we went to that first event. And Chris, you know, just not knowing us, we were brand new in terms of being involved in Strongman. Uh, threw out the red carpet, welcomed us down to that event last year, and uh, uh, it, it, it really kicked off our strongman uh, presence in the same way that that one MMA event did years ago, uh, in such a way that I think, uh, and, and I know because of what's been happening over the past year, but strongman will be one of our top sports. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. As a competitor, why should I use a mouth guard? And I say that as someone who has used a mouth guard. I mean, I started, you know, 10 years ago doing this stuff, and I went to Dick Sporting Goods, got the crappy plastic, you know, Nike Under Armour, whatever, and, I, you know, I used that for a number of years. And then I had uh, a couple of guys go, dude, what do you do with that piece of junk? You know, get get one of these, you know, uh, New Age. You know, I'm not sure one of your competitors. And so I got a New Age, and it's fine. And they talk about, you know, the performance benefit. But, like, 
what is the benefit or why why would a strong man or strong woman athlete use a mouth guard and, and when would you say they should use it for yeah. so so first and foremost you got to protect those molars right you mm -hmm. guys are under such heavy load that uh you got to have something that's protecting your teeth now uh I, i've come to learn that some folks when they're lifting they don't close their mouth all the way right mm -hmm. and and you tell me is that a flaw in their um technique or is that just their technique and and it's meant to be that way. I think to each his or her own, you know. Yeah, it, it, it varies. I mean, there's, you know, for me, it was more, and what I see for at least the people that that, that uh, I train is, it's a matter of can they breathe, right? The ones that have problems breathing yeah. while they're under heavy load are the ones that you typically see with their mouths open because they're just grasp, gasping for air, right? So, right. Yeah, interesting. And, and that was actually the problem for me with, again, the more the football mouth guard. Yeah, I just couldn't breathe. Get the air, right? Yeah. The new age, you know, and yours, you know, are, are smaller. Um, well, quick funny story. I was at the dentist probably about, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And he said, hey, I think you're grinding your teeth. You know, your molars and your back teeth, you're really wearing down the enamel. I want you to, you know, have your wife check at night and see if you're grinding your teeth. So, you know, after, and you know, a couple of days, like, you know, did I do it? And she said, they're grinding your teeth. And then I kind of put two and two together. It was when I'm like doing a heavy max Training, effort, you yeah. know, whatever, deadlift. I'm, you know, I'm gritting my yeah. teeth. Like many of us do, and that's when I started using an off guard. Just like, you know, like you said, protect the molars, right? So yeah. those are the two biggest benefits to the mouth guard. The first is it's protecting your molars. Yes. Yeah. The, the second is, uh, you know, when you cinch down, it's kind of like the old leather strap technique or theory. Yeah. Uh, that they used to put that in for pain and whatnot. So you you bear down, and when you bite down on that, it aligns your spine. That's some of the performance uh, uh, yeah. issues, but mostly. It gives you that cushion between your two, uh, between your molars, your upper and lower, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it helps you lift. Uh, but importantly, what you said was the breathing part of it is, uh, you know, some of those boil and bite kinds, you mentioned one earlier, uh, they're kind of like blocky in your mouth. Yeah, and they, big, they, yeah. If, if you don't stay bit down, they uh, float around in your mouth. Yeah. Our guard, because it's custom, sits right down on your teeth. And so you could move your mouth anywhere you want it to be, um, and, and it's going to be in place so that when you come back down, when you bite back down, it's right where you need it to be. And not everybody's like Lee. Not everybody likes big things in their mouth, you know? So, um, <laughs> God, you're so yeah. funny. <laughs> you know, um, well, in just a few moments, we're going to see how you do with an impression. That's right. That's what I'm waiting yes, for. Yes, we are. Payback's, <laughs> payback's coming. Well, it's interesting you uh, say that, Frank, because, I mean, that was one thing I noticed early on in my career and I started late in strongman. I was 43 when I started, but like after my third competition, of course, everybody's dead after the competition anyway, but I'm like, why the hell is my jaw hurt? Right. right? I didn't, I wasn't lifting anything in my mouth. And then, you know, eventually started to, you know, dawn on me that I'm maybe it was the night before it's the great, yeah, oh, oh, but just grinding my teeth. And, and I, I don't grind my teeth when I sleep either, but right. I know it's just gotta be notorious when I'm lifting, especially heavy. Right. And Lee, are you using a mouth guard now too? Yeah, yeah, gotcha. I've been for probably the last three years. So uh, yeah, monumental difference. So for sure. Well, uh, as we just mentioned, we're going to do an impression uh, of Mike here uh, on on the podcast. Yeah. But uh, perhaps maybe I come back later when you actually get the guards and uh, we talk about what a difference it makes. Absolutely, made. sure. It really, it, yeah. you know, it's kind of like when you put this thing on for the first time, your eyes are going to light up because you're going to say, "You said that's how a mouth guard should fit." Right. It's that different. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And what we hear from the community is, um, especially when they're used to this other guard you guys are, are speaking of, is that um, it, it takes a couple sessions to get used to our guard because it's almost as if nothing's in your mouth when it's in huh. there. And uh. because, it, because it's sitting down on your teeth, it is uh, uh, much more comfortable and less noticed, but it has... Uh, almost similar thickness. It's not quite as thick as those guards, but um, it's the exact um, uh, adequate thickness mm. that you need for the lifting. And one thing I'll add um, is that these are custom guards. And so uh, once you get, let's say you start with the standard thickness, that's what you select when you come to our website. The next time you could get one thicker if you like it, you can get it thinner, you can get it trimmed in case you do have that gag reflex that a lot of athletes have. In yeah. the back of their throat, you know, we'll trim it up a little bit for you. 
<laughs> right. Here's well, Soviet. <laughs> yeah. Does it, so, Frank, question on that, too. I mean, as far as the uh, thickness of the mouth guard when you're making that selection, I mean, does there, is there any – does any is there any difference in uh, breathing between the different things? I mean, it's hard to breathe. This, this doesn't make any difference. No, because uh, this thing is locked on your, on your lower arch, and so uh, it's there. It's out of the way. You can open your mouth. And here's here's the thickness. I'm not sure you want this much information, but the standard thickness that we craft these guards at is seven millimeters of material. Okay. And so if we go thicker, typically it's to eight millimeters. So you can see okay, that it's so not that yeah. much of a bump, but yeah. um, you know it's uh, twenty percent more material almost. Yeah, uh, sure. Right, but uh, for for folks that are lifting really heavy and really like that thicker guard, that's yeah. the way to go for them. Now, if you happen to have a smaller mouth or uh, uh, one of the lady lifters like like a smaller guard, that's yeah. the six millimeter guard. So under, uh, and again, twenty percent less material almost. Well, Lee's got a big mouth. It's going to be the biggest one you can to fit his <laughs> mouth. So, um, eight millimeters. Is there, at least I'll be able to breathe. Yeah. yeah. Is there, um, I noticed on the website, you know, again, we talked about you know, the MMA mouth guards. Clearly, like an MMA versus a hockey versus a strongman or strength athlete mouth guard, there are differences. Is there a product specific for a strongman or a powerlifter or a strength athlete? Oh, absolutely. Our, our guard called the Powerlift Mouth Guard. Uh, okay. is specifically made for strongman and powerlifting. Got it. Uh, okay. It is different than the, uh, you know, you'd think I'd have one here to show you, but I don't. Um, but the uh, difference is it's as little material as you could get in your mouth and still protect your molars and yeah. get the benefits of having a guard in your mouth uh, with as little material as possible. So uh, by way of example, a hockey mouth guard, football, or any other sport is going to come all the way around for those frontal impacts sure. uh, and for impact uh, from underneath, uppercut, yeah. something along those lines, yeah. uh, material everywhere. The power lift mouth guard is really only material on the molars. And then there's a thin connector, which is also uh, custom made to your teeth. So it fits right in there, but it's, mm. it's really thin in comparison. Do you have any background in dentistry or this is all stuff you've learned over the years doing this, Frank? I'm a hockey player. <laughs> so you. About teeth. Perfect. Yeah. and i still have my teeth so that gives me yeah. a pedigree good yeah well we're uh, about no. we're, we're, we're past halfway through it's time for intermission but before we go to intermission yeah um, let's do your impression let's mike make this small so i've got the white and the yellow um uh, what do you call it putty yep putty exactly yeah. right and so uh mike when you take those out of the uh out of the little plastic cup you're gonna take some. Uh, you're gonna take it all, right? And Mike always uh, takes it all. <laughs> He's a man. I think. I think I still. I think you still owe me one. I think you still owe me one, Lee. But yeah, well played. Yeah. Well played. Yes. So, Mike, you, use your fingertips to mix it. Okay. Don't mix it in the palm of your hand. Just mix oh, it up here like good. this. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, and that'll that'll make sure that you mix just it fast. Lee, just the tip. <laughs> It's all in the fingertips. This is all in the fingertips. It's not a show for kids, by the Come way. On, yeah, I'm telling you. They haven't figured that out by now. So once you have a uniform color of blue. It's pretty much, it's about there, yeah. You're going to roll it into a ball and then into a cigar pretty quickly. Okay. Because this putty is starting to harden as you're mixing it. All right, and then a cigar, yeah. So times of the essence. Then you're going to put it. Lee really the likes this shape, by the way. Okay. Then put it right into your uh, tray. Okay. And now, remember, we're taking impressions of your lower teeth here. Lower. Got it. Uh, and, and let's just confirm. I don't remember when I was speaking to you. Did you say upper or lower? But lower is our standard. Lower, yeah. yeah. Okay, so once you have that putty in the tray. Like that. Yo, that's Good. perfect. Okay. Put it in your mouth, but don't bite down. Don't. Because you want to get the middle of the putty right here on the, the edge of your teeth. All right, I'm going to time this so I make sure I do it for two and a half minutes, right? Just That's put it, it in your mouth. Just put it in yep. your mouth. That's what she said. Okay, thanks. Lee, <laughs> Lee talk him through it. Yeah, there you go. Here. Oh, there you slower. Go. One slower. Second. Yep, did you bite down already? Good. Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. Well, that being said, we're going to take our intermission break so Mike can uh, 
not make this X-rated. So we're going to stop for a quick break. Be back. Two minutes. So we're back. Mike took the hard thing out of his mouth so he can talk again. I pulled it out, Lee. You like that? Pulled it out. That's awesome. Hey, Frank, I, just uh, – it up close to the screen. Let's see if it's it's uh, good and deep. Oh, yep. yeah. It's deep. It looks, like, yeah, it looks like a good impression. <laughs> That's the way Lee likes it. Good and deep. <laughs> just like prison. That's right. <laughs> so, Mike, uh, uh, recap. Um, I know we touched on it briefly, but I want to I wanna go back into it again for um, – the performance benefits. I know you talked about, obviously, you know, when you're when you're biting down the, the alignment of the spine, but let's talk about, give us more information on the performance benefits of, you know, obviously protecting your molars and, you know, the alignment of the spine, but elaborate on that a little bit more. For, for yeah, yeah, so without uh, uh, going into the specifics of the study, I believe it was Ar Under Armour that did a study on the strength benefits of wearing a mouth guard and the recovery benefits of wearing a mouth guard. And, uh, you know, there was some pretty big number of claims that uh, I don't know if they're true or not, but they were saying things like you might get up to a 10 percent strength increase, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the burst, if that makes sense. Like sure. when yeah. you cinch down and you, you do the lift, um, you're, you're increasing your ability to lift by perhaps as much as 10 percent. So uh, yeah. uh, that's what these independent. Every little bit helps, man. That's right. 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 And uh, we, we don't talk a lot about those studies, um, and it's not something that we uh, lay our claim to fame on, yeah. but uh, they do exist. And uh, for each individual athlete, that sort of thing is going to be individualistic. Sure, sure. But uh, we know we're protecting teeth in a comfortable way. Um, uh, and uh, you should, you know, if you're not wearing a mouth guard, you should be. And if you're not wearing a custom mouth guard, you definitely time to them to kind of step up if you are wearing a mouth yeah guard. yeah sure and I, and I think there's at least for the people that you know that i train with you know immediately uh that are in our crew the the uh the in, in the enticement for them to go to a mouth guard i mean i like i said i've been wearing one for like three years now 
Um, for me, the biggest benefit and the thing that I go through, and Frank, you were talking about it, where for the strongman or the powerlifting guard, where it's only on the sides where the molars are, and then that thin band in the front, is again that ability to breathe, right? Because when I'm, if I'm under load, especially in moving events, you need to be able to breathe. I mean, you're right. you're going like hell, everything 100 percent for you know up to 60 seconds. That if you don't breathe, it's going to be timeout. Things are going to start to sparkle, and you're going to go down, right? Yeah. Right. So you're getting that dual benefit of of having that ability to bear onto something other than your molars, but still having that ability to breathe. And the mouth guard that I have now is that same thing where I can grit down and I can easily breathe in and out. And it's actually increased my ability to breathe versus not having it in at all. Right. right. And, and that seems to be the enticement that a lot of people will, at least in the, in the strongman community, the people I know, to go to a mouth guard is because they have that problem. Right. So. The, the, the need to breathe in all sports is universal, right? And so the sure. more we can help athletes breathe better, uh, the better off we are. And so the MMA guy needs to gas for air, you know, yeah. uh, whenever it is during his fight. Um, a hockey player skating up and down the ice, you got to be able to get the air in. If you can't get the air in, everything else is going to fall apart. Like you said, it's going to begin to sparkle. Muscles need oxygen. Sure. The brain needs oxygen. Yes. I mean, right. you just can't function otherwise, right? And yeah. so it's that breathing, that breathing uh, thing that has been our claim to fame because our guards lock on. Whether you're wearing one for uh, a basketball, whatever sport it is, or strongman, they lock in place. Sure. You can open if you need to. You can close when you need to, and there's still a little gap there for you to breathe. Um, right. yeah, breathing is the key. Well, thank you for saying that, Frank, because my next question was, what makes your products different from other off-the-shelf products? So you've just answered that, so thank you. That's it. And the fact that uh, what we just did, uh, Mike, where you did the impression, yeah. that's really the secret sauce because this mm -hmm. thing is being made to fit you perfectly Yeah. Uh, rather than something off the shelf, which is made to fit everybody, and as right. a result, fits nobody very well. Plus, it didn't burn my mouth, so that was a bonus. It didn't burn your yeah, mouth, right? It was, sure. it was pleasant. Yeah. Yes. So the next critical question, Frank, um, and your sales in the state of Kentucky are contingent on the answer to this question is uh, <laughs> if if there's any is there any issue with anybody uh, having one of your mouth guards that may have crooked teeth or missing teeth? I mean, I am from Kentucky, so we're I'm asking on the behalf of the Commonwealth. So, <laughs> well, thank not you. yourself, you right, Lee? No, I, not myself. I've got some jacked up bottom teeth. Uh, jacked up teeth are exactly what we uh, specialize in because mm -hmm. of what Mike just did. That impression process captures exactly what you have going on in your mouth at that moment in time. Perfect. And so, uh, you know, it's the absolutely only way to get a mouth guard that's going to fit perfectly. Okay. So Absolutely. even with your your cousin, your next door neighbor's cousin, Lee, it, you know, <laughs> they'll be able to get a mouth guard that'll fit. It's actually okay. his sister, but whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Close enough. Even if you have two sets of teeth in there, we'll that's make it. Right. Hey, you know, that's right. That's why, that it, that's why they call it a toothbrush and not a teeth brush, right? right exactly. Um, hey, how long do the mouth guards typically last, Frank? Are they good for six months, a year, two years? So that, that's an interesting question because in all of our other sports, if you take uh, at least a bit of care of your mouth guard, the yeah. materials will last and last and last. And okay. so as the owner of a mouth guard company, you'd think I'd have hundreds of mouth guards. But I've got <laughs> one that I stick in my hockey helmet after every game. Yeah. And I've had the same one now probably for four or five years. Wow. Uh, Strongman's right. a little different in that um, it's constantly under heavy load. Yeah. Sure. But, uh, you guys mentioned another company earlier that makes a boil and bite product, but they have taught everybody to believe that the guard needs to be replaced in a certain amount of hours of training. Well, of course, because um, there's more money to be made when you're you know, selling it's more It's fantastic. Mouth I mean, it's brilliant what they've done. Yeah. But sure. I will go on record as saying we have no such requirement. Uh, mm -hmm. Our materials will last and last until you go through it. And uh, what we're finding is that uh, it, we're easily getting nine months to a year plus. Okay. Uh, like I mentioned Chris Slater earlier, yeah. he's had the same guard for over a year under heavy load multiple times a week. Yeah. His guard is still in perfect condition. Nice. Um, um, what is proper care? Is it just rinsing it off? Do you brush it with toothpaste, soap and water? Like, well, How do you take care of it? You rinse it off. We've got a spray that if you want to uh, kill germs and get some flavor, you give it a little spritz. 
But uh, if you just rinse it in cold water every time, yeah, you know, you, you're in good shape. Okay. That's awesome. I don't do anything with my mouth guard. I, I, mean, I, I literally stick it in my sweaty helmet, and then I take it out next game. I, I do give it a spray so that it has a little bit of mint flavor rather than that, uh, you know, sweaty head flavor. Sounds right. like knee, Lee's knee sleeve, which are ranked. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's right. Exactly. So uh, we, we have no planned obsolescence in our product. Cool. Uh, that's awesome. That's great. We expect it to last certainly more than six months. Uh, each athlete would be different. That's perfect. So, Frank, I mean, uh, and I know we haven't really talked about it. So the, my understanding is, so Mike did the impression. So that process works where Mike's going to take the impression. He's going to send it to you. You're going to make the mouth guard, send it back to him. Is that how it works? I mean, basically. Yeah, exactly um, right. So then do you keep Mike's impression? So if he orders a replacement guard, he can get the same one, or do you have them make a new impression every time? We do, no. So unless there's a change in dentition, we've mm -hmm. got the impression on file. And as long as you've ordered once in the last three years, because we keep it for three years, um, if there's no order, but yeah. it, each time you make an order, it's a new new uh, period of time. It resets, uh, yeah. yeah, we keep it on file. And so uh, lots of us have dogs at home. And yep. I will tell you, dogs will root through a bag to get to your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every yep, day sure. we get the call. Wow. Uh, you know, so uh, if the dog eats it or you just want another color or you've gone through it, then uh, you just go online, order another one, and we pull your model and make it for you. Cool. Sweet. That's awesome. awesome. Uh, have you ever done any strongman training yourself, Frank? Uh, I have not done any strongman. Uh, no. I'll tell you what I, I have done, though. Uh, there's a guy near me in Roswell, Georgia. His name's Kerry Callahan. He's a power lifter, uh -huh. and uh, we make some mouth guards for his uh, gym and his athletes. Uh, I've been lifting a little with him, but okay. I'm definitely not strongman. So you haven't even tried any events, you like a farmer's walk, a yoke, try to press yeah, a Yeah, you know, no. just, yeah, a little bit in his gym. Okay. But, yeah. It, right. It's pretty light stuff. Just curious. Yeah, right. Excellent. Yeah, I want to do more of it. I, I'm intrigued, but. Um, so okay. speaking of that, Frank, what's your favorite event in Strongman that you've seen so far? Well, my favorite events come to be uh, Stones. Yes. Uh, Yes. Yes. That's yes. come to be my favorite. And, you know, uh, 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 Randy Super Hulk Cole, who yeah. is an athlete who we've made mouth guards for, uh, he discovered our tape uh, that we made for other sports. Yeah, there you go. Like, uh, we made this tape for boxing and yeah. other sports. Uh, he wrapped it around his forearms to lift stones with it. Yeah. And discovered Ooh. that uh, it, it's like cement on your arms, but it gives you the friction. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, certainly in events where you can't use tacky and you can't right. use uh, other uh, implements, this, steel. Yeah. this stuff works like a charm. That's awesome. Yeah. That is fantastic. Well, I was going to say, yeah, I mean, I, I had this in the box. Thank you for sending some. But um, yeah, you also mentioned that not only do you have this regular athletic tape, but you, may, you now make um, tape specific for stones, right? That's right. So it's a 1.5-inch width tape. And uh, mm -hmm. it's got a special skin-safe adhesive called EX85. And mm -hmm. uh, if you put this stuff on your skin when it's dry, man, uh, you could take a fire hose to it. It is not coming off wow. until, you, until you want to peel it off. That's huh. fantastic. Yeah. Lee, I'll get you some of that so you can give it a go. That would be great. Yeah. And, and, you know, you think about the amount of guys. I mean, typically in Strongman, you see it, it's – it's. <laughs> I, I do it to some of my people as well. It's like, okay. Duct tape works, right? But you're going to lose all the hair on your arm, I guarantee, sure. when I take it off, right? Yeah. Um, but then if you get sweaty, right, it starts sliding down your arm. As soon as the yeah. sweat hits it, right, you start sliding yeah. down your arm. Um, some people have the the big fancy, you know, I started out with them, you know, the leather-wrapped uh, arm guards, yeah. right, for stones. But, yeah. you know, those are a pain in the ass to put off, take on. Then you got to clean them and you got to store them. And, yeah, see a lot of people with athletic tape. Just the old Dick Sporting Good stuff, wrap, 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 and have at it. And so right? I gotta ask, how did you get from mouth guards to this? What what brought that? Yeah, up? how did that happen? Yeah, I tell you. So uh, as a hockey player, again, it all goes back to that. We, we wrap our sticks and yeah. we wrap our shin pads and tape. And I thought, wow, it would be neat to have a branded tape just to get the word out about impact. Right. Um, so That's we awesome. we developed the tape, and uh, it took off in boxing because we spent mm -hmm. a lot of time with USA sure. Boxing, where the official yeah. mouth guard. 
and uh, the adhesives stay on the hand when they tape under their gloves. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and so it became popular there. And then uh, all of a sudden it, it found a use in strongman. Yeah. And uh, th that's just been the most fun is finding another product besides the mouth guards. That, yeah. Uh, the community appreciates. That's, that's really cool. That is really cool for sure. Um, well, before I let you go, we're about, we're out of time pretty much, but uh, you are going to be at least competition. You're a sponsor of his show. You're a sponsor of my competition in October. So on behalf of both of us, I want to thank you for your support. Yes, thank you very um, much. I know I've got athletes who are really excited to come and have the opportunity to, you know, win uh, one of your one of your mouth guards and, and try some of your tape. Um, so really appreciate your uh, your support and your interest in uh, in the community. Thank you. Same. Ditto. Appreciate it, Frank, yeah, for sure. You know, it's certainly our pleasure, and uh, we want to support Strongman everywhere. And so – uh, all of the folks that you know and that listen to the podcast, if you're running an event, if we can't be on site, we'll send prizes up. Uh, we just want to be part of the community and uh, do everything we can to uh, uh, become a big part of it. Awesome. That's fantastic. Well, Good thank job. you for your time. We really appreciate your being on here. It's, it was a really informative uh, interview conversation that I hope people will uh, watch and listen to and get something out of. I mean, I learned a lot. Yeah, so. I did too. Unbelievable. Uh, thank Guys, you. my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, nine episodes in, so congratulations on getting your thing going. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No, good thank stuff. You. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll see keep, you soon, man. Keep rolling. Right. You'll hit your stride after about 30 of these things. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> keep going. Thanks, Thanks Okay. Really. Goodbye.